Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Jules. I'm a trans, non-binary, and autistic pre-licensed <laughs> clinician, and I use they, them pronouns, if you were curious. So I'm here today, unexpectedly, to talk about what is going on with Judy Singer. So if you've clicked on this video and you're just curious and you have no idea who Judy Singer is, Judy Singer is an older woman from the UK who initially in her dissertation was the first person to talk about the term neurodiversity. <laughs> so first of all, I want to say that a lot of people credit her for all things neurodiversity, like she was the first one, she's a legend, and it's a big deal. I'm going to tell you something. If you do a little bit of research, you're actually going to find out that Judy Singer did not independently coin the term neurodiversity. She was actually on a lot of forums where autistic people were using that term. And then she was the first to bring it into an academic context and actually research the term neurodiversity and do a dissertation around that specific topic. So I think it's important that we say that before we all grieve the loss of someone who we may look at as a major pioneer in the neurodiversity movement. So before I go on to talk about Judy, I just want to clarify that there are other people involved in the neurodiversity movement and paradigm. In fact, Judy wasn't the one to create the neurodiversity movement and paradigm. Nick Walker was. And it's interesting to bring up Nick Walker because she is a trans femme individual who's also well educated and has a PhD and is a professor. And she wrote the book Neuroqueer Heresies. I'm still in the process of finishing it myself. Um, but it's a great book on various essays about how the neurodiversity paradigm and movement were started and coined and why it's so important to shift our understanding of mental health away from the medical model and pathology paradigm and how that shames people. It contributes to ableism and mental health stigma and causes harm. And it's really important to shift our language and understanding of neurodivergence, especially acquired neurodivergence being part of the neurodiversity paradigm. We want to credit Nick Walker and we also want to credit Kassian um, and Kassian is an individual who created the term neurodivergent. So a lot of people get this confused. The term neurodiversity includes everyone, including neurotypical people as a neurotype. The term neurodivergent includes anyone who has a neurotype who diverges from the norm. It doesn't mean you have to have anxiety to be neurodivergent. You don't have to have a medical or pathology-based diagnosis in order to identify as neurodivergent. That is a social model of disability construct. So you are able to say if you are a neurodivergent or not. A medical doctor doesn't decide that for you or a mental health professional. You go on your own journey of self-discovery to decide does this label work for me or not and why. And I think even if you're not neurodivergent, going on that exploration is important. Just like it's important if you're cisgender to explore if you could possibly be trans or explore your gender identity and how that presents for you. Because cisgender people still have have gender identity and they can better understand the struggles of trans people when they actually take the time to explore that process and see how difficult it is to figure out that piece of who you are. All right, so now we're going to talk about Judy, and all I can hear in my head, and I was thinking about it this morning, is uh, Jesse Smiles' video of her former friend Judy, and uh, Judy, no! Judy, no! So Judy Singer has been an ally this whole time. No one's really had an issue with her. Um, maybe we could have thought about something going on. She is older, but of course, we don't want to be ageist. There are older people who are very affirming and tolerant and who are trans and non-binary themselves. Unfortunately, I found out this morning from another content creator that Judy Singer was going on Twitter and spreading anti-trans rhetoric. And this is a problem because being trans is not up for debate. You're not allowed to say, I don't believe in that. So if we want to go back outside of neurodiversity and shift back to the medical model and pathology paradigm, actually the medical model and pathology paradigm completely agree with gender affirming care and prove the validity and existence of being trans and non-binary and that gender affirming care is life saving. And I know this time of year in Pride Month that there are a lot of bigots out there. They might even be watching this video. So I will be turning the comments off because 
there's no room for debate or discussion around topics of neurodivergence or uh, transness. We are not going to have those debates here. That is not welcome in my space as a fellow non-binary person, just putting it out there. So it was very shocking for me to go online this morning and see Judy spreading anti-trans rhetoric. And you can go look it up yourself. I have a screenshot. I just feel like as a fellow trans person, it was so activating to look at that it's not something that I feel comfortable reading out loud in my video or putting up there. But to summarize it, although Judy Singer was sort of accepting of intersex people, and we'll get into that in a minute because she really missed the mark, she really is not accepting of trans women, which is why people are currently calling her a TERF, if you don't know what that is. That's a trans exclusionary radical feminist, and that is also a problem. You don't get to disagree with who someone is or exclude them from a movement that they deserve to be part of because they deserve safety and community and peace and acceptance and love just as much as anybody else. And this is also a huge problem because trans women and trans femme people are the most marginalized version of trans that you can be in our community right? Like trans mask people have their own difficulties they deal with, as do non-binary people. And of course, someone could be a trans woman or trans femme and be non-binary because gender identity is so expansive that you're not limited to one option. But to take the most marginalized person in our community and be bigoted toward them and belittle their existence is absolutely beyond unacceptable. Um, and to see someone doing that, that so many people who are trans in our movement look up to that are neurodivergent, that have been amplifying Judy in her work. I know for me personally, I was following her on LinkedIn um, and she can't seem to get past language, which I get that's an autistic thing. I, I do as a fellow autistic person, but that's not a reason to not understand trans people. So let's get something straight right here. You don't need to understand Understand what it means to be trans or non-binary or anything gender non-conforming to accept and not only that affirm trans non-binary and gender non-conforming people to use their pronouns to use their correct name to give them compliments that they are comfortable with about their appearance if they consent to it and also to not ask trans people for free labor and demand that you need to understand transness better to be accepting because there's bigotry with that because a lot of folks are taking a binary understanding of gender that they have that has been socially conditioned into them and they're trying to apply it to trans and non-binary people, which you just cannot do. I'm sorry, you just cannot do that. It's not going to work. It's not something that you can apply this framework to. Circling back to the intersex comment, um, Judy Singer mentioned that she believes that intersex people have the right to choose, but I'm not done yet. <laughs> she didn't mean choose their gender identity and that she thinks that's okay. They get to choose if they are a man or a woman. So Judy Singer is still completely stuck in binary gender constructs to the point that she supports intersex people being traumatized and having gender non-affirming surgery to fit a specific gender identity that many of them may not want to fit because plenty of intersex folks are trans and non-binary and etc and completely deserve to be and they're also an extremely marginalized population in our community that even though they're in the lgbtqia plus acronym they are often left out so judy is missing the mark she is way too stuck in men women men women men women and a Apparently spreading the rhetoric of being afraid of trans women, which is a huge, massive problem. We've been through this so many times before. And you know what? This is something you go to your little cisgender community and talk about and work through. It's not something you publicly post about online. I have no idea why she thought that was okay and no one was going to be upset considering how many trans people look up to her, like I said. So I'm not doing a deep dive of Judy Singer here. I'm just bringing to light and awareness that we need to talk about what's happening with her. So now I'm gonna shift to what action I will be taking as someone who previously specialized in neurodiversity affirming care as a clinician and is a huge component of uh, the autistic community. I know that everyone's gonna handle this differently and this is very new and fresh and harmful because it just happened. But I'm a quick processor to bigotry. I am very triggered by it and I kind of move through my triggers and then figure out what I'm going to do. For me personally, I no longer will be using the term neurodiversity. This is not a preachy video for people to not use that term. I don't give a single poop. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. And if you want to still be dialectic and utilize that term and acknowledge the harm Judy Singer caused, like fine, we do that with a lot of people. I mean, look at all the cis white men that are harmful. Look at people like Bessel van der Kolk who made the body keeps the score and he's wicked harmful and people keep 
promoting his work. So I get it. I get that some people separate it. They want to be dialectic. And I'm not here to say that Judy has not made positive contributions to this community. I'm not here to erase that history. But that's not what this video is about. For me personally, the term neurodiversity gives me the ick anyway, because it includes neurotypical people. And they're already included in our society. They're included in things enough. They don't experience the same discrimination as people with other neurotypes do. Um, and I primarily don't work with neurotypical clients. I specialize in mostly working with autistic and ADHD people, but of course, neurodivergence extends beyond that. And I'm open to working with other neurodivergences like BPD and OCD, and I do. I will be saying from now on that I specialize in neurodivergent affirming care so that when people are looking to work with me, if they know about the situation, they know that I'm informed and that I'm a safe trans clinician and that I'm not gonna uplift little white ladies who cause harm. Like, I'm just not interested in, in doing that and causing harm to myself or my trans community. I, I just don't think that that's okay. And I also think that amplifying Nick and Cassian's work is going to be so important because this has come up a lot. I think I talked in a previous video about how a lot of autistic providers in our community actually don't think that acquired neurodivergence is valid, which is a problem because Nick and Cassian both completely support that. The neurodivergent movement that I might call it now actually are not meant to exclude people. That's the last thing this movement is about. And Cassian and Nick have said that countless times. They have come forward and said that before. Um, and I think the reason that <laughs> white old lady providers who are autistic don't like to honor Cassian and Nick is because Cassian is a person of color and Nick is trans femme. And that is the problem, that we're uplifting people like Judy Singer and leaving more marginalized folks behind when we need to amplify their experiences and their voices. And beyond that, we need to compensate them. Compensate Cassian, compensate Nick. If Nick does a training, compensate her fairly for that. And you know, I don't know these people personally, so I don't want to say anything about them in particular, but I am just livid. I feel sick to my stomach and that is going to sit with me the whole rest of the day as a now neurodivergent affirming provider. I have contacted my supervisor at my job and asked that she change my work bio and my psych today bio because I'm not supporting people who cause harm to my community. So that's all I have for you today. I just wanted to come sit down and talk through this. I hope that you enjoyed my video. Comments um, and debate are not welcome. And if you don't like this and you're activated, go to therapy, go to a cisgender person, and go work it out with them. Don't bring it up to trans people. We don't need to help you to unpack your bigotry and transphobia. This is absolutely not our responsibility, especially unpaid and demanding free labor of us, okay? All right, so take care, y'all. Bye.